big hello to you all out there. It's been a little while since um, I built myself a pulse motor, so something a little different this time. A single battery pulse motor. Uh, and what we've achieved here is we're managing to send our high voltage spike back to the same battery that's running the system. So uh, no need for a second battery. Those of you who tried this before may find that when you try and loop it back to the primary battery, you create a current loop through the primary coil, the motor bogs down, and nine times out of ten things begin to smoke. So uh, we've alleviated this problem by adding a third inductor. In this case, I'm using the 12 volt side of a transformer. Uh, the blue wires here were 38 volts, and of course these ones here, 240 volt input which we can run on an LED quite comfortably off. But um, we're simply using this as a choke or an inductor and it has worked out quite fine. As you can see it is running quite well. What we have here is two CVRs and um, we're coming out of our primary coil through our diode um, which sends the inductive kickback in between these two coils and of course one side goes back to the positive and then we go through our two CVRs and over to this cap here and um, we first go through this transformer or choke out of the choke back to the cap so what this does here um, instead of the inductive kickback or the flyback looping through the system when we get that spike this transformer is um, being seen as a very high impedance for that inductive spike and so it travels back to the battery instead so uh, looking at the circuit here let's try and get it on the top just want to take a screenshot of that I'll try and keep the camera still and that is the circuit we're using. <clears throat> I did, or well, was going to try it in solid state mode by um, removing D2 here, which is across your um, base and emitter. Um, and in this situation, the pulse motor still works fine. It will not self-oscillate as per normal when you have the two batteries. So um, D2 is not needed for this circuit. Well, not in my case anyway. And um, so you can uh, put that in if you're going to build the circuit and then remove it, see what happens. But um, in this case, as you can see there on the transistor, I do not need it. Makes no difference at all. So here's L3 for our choke. Um, and as you can see, our uh, flyback diode is between the choke and the battery and I have our CVRs either side of that so we can look on the scope and make sure that the spike is going back into the battery and not looping back through the system so the common grounds of my scope are between the two CVRs um, and the yellow channel is on the battery side and the blue channel is on our circuit side and uh, this will allow us to see which way that inductive kickback is going so as it turns out as we can see on the scope our flyback is indeed going back to the battery and not through the circuit Light is running quite fine on one single battery. So, uh, once again, a very simple circuit. Um, that's just a small 2200 UF cap we're using that's um, storing the energy that fires the primary coil. And um, our choke or our inductor allows enough current to flow through to keep that cap topped up. But, um, like I said, when we get our flyback spike, that becomes a large impedance to that spike, and so that spike follows. 
the uh, least path of resistance which is back into our battery in this case. Um, our little neon I just put across the primary coil and not across the um, emitter collector as per the uh, normal motor. Either way it doesn't matter. Um, so the rest of the circuit is just our SSG circuit with the addition of the inductor and the capacitor and also in this case the removal of D1 or D2 sorry D1 must stay um, yeah so it works very fine it'd be a good way to see if your uh, pulse motor is over unity as you claim um, 7.67 so in this case not because the battery started at 8.13 about an hour ago and it has dropped down in voltage so um, no OU here at all but the effect is there we do indeed have our high voltage spikes going back to the battery and not looping through the circuit as you would normally have we can double check this simply by bridging our inductor or choke like that and now you can clearly see our inductive and the motor starting to slow down our inductive flyback spikes are looping straight through the system I don't know if you can hear that, but the motor is slowing right down and I can almost guarantee it's using a lot more current. So I'll remove one of the bridges and we can now see the inductive kickback spike is being sent to our battery and not through the system. And the motor is once again speeding up. So we'll bridge our uh, choke once again. And now we'll unbridge it. And it's very clear we're getting the desired effect. Alright, so just wanted to share you with that, um, with you guys. Simple little modification to the SSG to make it a sim simple single battery unit. And um, as you can see it works quite fine. You may need to uh, play around with the value of your inductor L3 here a bit to get it right. I first tried one the small one, this little one here, as I have the ferrite rod I can slide in and out of that inductor and change the inductance value a bit, but um, we still had the high voltage spike going through it, so the value was too low. That one there is about 122 millihenries. This one here was about 31. It's just for that coil and that little flywheel there, it's only two magnets on it. Um, we can stop that like that and as you can see all we have is noise across our uh, scope probes, no self oscillation. We are on 20 millivolts per division and they are only 0.1 ohm resistors. But no self oscillation with this setup. But um, indeed it will work on one single battery where you can run the system off the same battery that you are charging with high voltage spikes so it could be uh, reconditioning that battery as it runs there for itself. Alright, thanks for watching and I um, hope this circuit becomes of use to somebody out there. Cheers guys.